Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, Technical Marketing Engineer Intern at InfoBlox, and today we'll be talking about combining InfoBlox RPZ with ADP. So, let's show how this works. A DNS query is made to the grid. Here, before it gets to the internet, the RPZ feed blocks the DNS query. Here we can do a few cool things using syslog and ecosystem. Anytime an RPZ feed is hit, we can make a new entry to your local RPZ. After that local RPZ has been hit a certain number of times, it will create a new ADP rule. Any new requests to that domain will now be blocked by ADP. Here you can see the two templates that you will need to download. The first one being Nows Add RPZ by Hit. This will add a new RPZ rule. It has three instance variables, RPZ, max number of rules, and publish. As you can see, this is just a typical JSON file. On the other side, we have the other template, Nows Add Security ADP Rule by RPZ Hits. This will add an ADP rule. It has several instance variables, hits, UDP, TCP, comment, max number of rules, time for hits, publish, RPZ, delete oldest rule when full. Each one of these will be explained later as you may need to fill them in. And as you can see, this is just a typical JSON file like the last one. Next, we want to go to the grid, then go to administration, extensible attributes. Here we want to add two extensible attributes. Hits is the number of times an RPZ is hit within a given period of time. Time is the last time an RPZ was created or hit. Next, we want to go to Grid and Ecosystem. We're going to download the two templates that I showed earlier. NIOS Add RPZ by Hit and NIOS Add Security ADP Rule by RPZ Hit. Next, we want to go to Outbound Endpoint and add an endpoint for our templates to interact with. As you can see, we have many different things in this endpoint. However, it's very important that you add WAPI integration username and WAPI integration password. We will be using these. Next, we want to go to Notifications. Here we will make two notifications for the two templates. Inside the first notification for the second templates, inside of Rules, you can see something called Rule Name Contains Local.RPZ. This is important. You should put your own RPZ in here. Inside templates, we can see several instance variables. Hits decides how many times an RPZ is hit before an ADP rule is made. TCP, UDP decides whether or not you want TCP or UDP ADP rules made. Comment will be the comment attached to the ADP rule when it is made. Time for hits is a little bit more complicated. It has several different inputs that it can take. Second, minute, hour, day, month, and year. Each one of these will be within that time period how many hits before an ADP rule is made. For example, we have minute here and hits is equal to 1, as you can see above. So if one hit is occurring every minute, a new ADP rule will be made. Publish, true or false, will decide whether or not you want the grid to publish every new ADP rule. RPZ you may want to change, as this will be the RPZ that hits are occurring in. Max number of rules is the number of ADP rules you want to create. This should be maxed at 500 as doing more than 500 will cause the grid to have problems upgrading. Delete the oldest rule when full decides whether or not you want to delete the oldest ADP rule when the max number of rules are met. The alternative, which is false, will just stop any new ADP rules from being created. Next, in the second notification for the first template, under rules, we can see something called rule name contains base.rpz.infoblox.local. This is important because this will be the RPZ feed that you'll be using. For this RPZ, it will be where new RPZs are made. Next, max number of rules will be the maximum number of RPZ rules that you can create. Careful, if you have more than this number of rules in the RPZ, if a new RPZ is created, all the old rules up to that number will be deleted. When that RPZ rule is deleted, any ADP rules attached to it will also be deleted, and this will cause the publish true or false whether or not you want to publish all those changes. Now I'll be showing you how this works. Data management, DNS, response policy zone, we can see two different RPZs, our local and feed RPZs. Currently our local the RPZ is empty, however we will be filling it as we make queries to the grid. Hits will be made in the feed.rpz, which will then be transferred to the local.rpz. Next, under the Security tab, under the most recent version, we can see that the Blacklist TCP 
and blacklist UDP are empty. Here, I'll be making a few dig requests to example, test, and work.com. These queries can be found in myfeed.rpz and will be populating mylocal.rpz. Next, if we were to refresh local.rpz, we can see the hits that we made have been updated. Next, we go to security and look under blacklist TCP FQD and lookup and blacklist UDP FQD and lookup. They are still empty as we have not made any hits to the local.rpz. They have just been created. Next, we'll make a few dig requests to work.com. This way, local.rpz has been hit and it will create a new ADP rule. If we were to refresh, we can see work.com has been created. Next, we'll make a few dig requests to example.com to demonstrate that more than one ADP rule can be made. As you can see, if we were to refresh, example.com has been created. Next, I'll go to Grid Ecosystem Notification. Here we'll be making a slight change to local to outbound RPZ. Inside templates, I'll be changing max number of rules from 3 to 1. Then, in Data Management, DNS, Response Policy Zone, I will be deleting test.com and example.com. I'm doing this so that I can show you what happens when an RPZ rule is deleted, when it still has a security rule. Notice that test.com is still here. This is because it was deleted manually through the local.rpz. If you were to delete this through a query request and re reaching the max number of rules, it would be deleted. For example, I'll make a few requests to example.com. If we were to refresh security rules, we can see work.com has been removed. If we were to wait a few moments and hit refresh again, we can see example.com has been added. This is because we set a max number of rules to 1 for RPZ. That max number was met, and as such, work.com was deleted. Because work.com was deleted for the local.rpz, it was also deleted in all ADP references. Also, because we made so many hits to example.com, we can see example.com was created in the ADP rules. Now if we go back to grid ecosystem notifications, I will be making a few more changes to RPZ to ADP. Inside the templates, I'll be changing max number of rules from 2 to 1. And inside local to app on RPZ, on the templates, I'll be changing the max number of rules from 1 to 2. Next, we'll go to data management security and delete all the rules. Next, we'll make a few dig requests to work and test.com. As you can see, work and desk.com have been created. However, if we go to security, no new rules have been made yet. Now we'll make a few dig requests to work.com and go back to security to show that work.com has been created. If we go back and create a few dig requests to test.com, go back to security. We can see work.com has been replaced with test.com. This is because the max number of rules has been met, and as such, work.com was deleted and test.com was put in its place. If we were to go to DNS, Response Policy Zone, we can see test.com is the only rule here. This is because when work.com was deleted from the ADP rules, it was also deleted in the RPZ rules. This shows that if any rule is deleted in the RPZ or ADP, it will also be deleted in the other. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, you can find me at the community site at infoblocks.com. Have a great day.